Namaste and in La Catch, and welcome to this episode of One World in a New World. I'm your host, Zen Benefiel, and this week's guest is Morton Toft. He is just an amazing human being. He's been all over the world. He's an author, a speaker, a coach, a change maker with over 30 years experience in teaching and training leaders. He got his background in the marketing industry and had a rich experience professionally in that. He also helped to find or found an organization called Danish Hospital Clowns. He's delivered over a thousand presentations internationally, humorous, inspiring. He's also sat with many gurus and spiritual leaders of today in his travels, purposely seeking them out to garner their wisdom as well. He's got four books too. To be perfectly honest, Innovative Recipe, which is also used as standard reading for some curriculum that's being taught, Change Makers, and Fitting Together the Puzzle of Your Life. So, more thanks so much for being here and about this puzzle of your life. How can we, right? What a great segue. Yeah. Yeah. It's also an honor to, to be here. And uh, I have to say here in the beginning that. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, nervous. And when I say nervous, it's also because English is not my first language. Uh, so maybe I will make some mistakes. So if there are some personality types out there that are listening and watching this, and they are always looking for mistakes, you know that those types that are looking for mistakes, they would probably find some mistakes. In, oh, yeah. uh, and in my... you know, it depends on what we look for. We look, exactly. when we look, we'll find regardless of what that is. If we're just listening and not necessarily looking, we just want to take, embrace in, you know, that information, that's a whole different story. It is. Um, and speaking of taking in, let, let's begin with that, the, the inner side of life for you as, because with what you're doing now, it's obviously that you're deeply devoted to a connection to everything and that you help others to find that as well. And this evident from the conversations we've had before uh, and, and your journeys uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. So how did this, uh, when you were younger, did you notice, do you remember anything that began to give you that notion that, yeah, there's something more to life than, uh, and, and I'm actually connecting with it? Uh. I would say that just right now in this moment that are coming some memories when uh, I love it when that know, happens. Yeah, when, when we built it, it was maybe when I was seven or eight years old, when I helped my father and mother to build a summer house on the countryside. And there was a lot of uh, nature around and all that. And I spent a lot of time by walking in and find the, you know, uh, uh, different flowers and uh, watching the butterflies and all that. It was like, uh, maybe there, it started some of the, the big questions mm -hmm. about, uh, are we part, maybe, are we part of something bigger than ourselves? At least uh, uh, walking around there, that was the first memory that came to me when you asked me, me that question. Wonderful how things can get triggered like that. So serendipitous, right? Yeah. And, and in that serendipity, what I've noticed that, for myself and, and perhaps you too, many others, is that as a child, there's this initial connection with nature. Now, some of us are gifted with the opportunities to do so. Mm. Others, not so much. So how does that, for a younger person that may be listening to this, what might they understand or begin to in that connection with nature as to what, I mean, you, you just spoke of, you realize, well, maybe there, we're part of something bigger, right? Well, what are the, the things, the considerations, or maybe even the questions that the younger crowd might have towards that understanding and integration with their own connection? Mm. I love uh, sometimes when I watch uh, Dalai Lama, is interviewed by people and uh, and he sometimes say 
I don't know. <laughs> right. It's like we we ex we expect him always to to come up with an answer, and then he say, "I don't know." It's like uh, okay, uh, and and I was so close to 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 say the same here with your question. But oh, that's uh, fine. It's that's like fine. I don't know, uh, but uh, but I have been working with young people for more than thirty years as well. It's mm -hmm. like have two sides of me. One is to working with business people. And the other side is working with young people. Right. And that's my, that's where my whole uh, passion, <laughs> my, the real passion, if you could say so, my heart is saying that's really what I'm born to do. It's like my, my history as a young person with difficulties and all that have made me uh, like a call. Uh, yeah, actually a little bit like a call, like a, um, you have to do this. You have to because this is important that you you share something about your own difficulties as a young person. Sure. Uh, so, so the first thing I think from the question is that we can have some episodes in our life that blocks. Can you say that and mm -hmm. make us not uh, being in contact uh, with something bigger than ourselves or the inner world? If, because those episodes are like so much in the way for uh, for that uh, to happen that was the that was what came to me it's like uh, we have to clean up we have to clean up those uh, uh, sometimes those episodes and when when do those episodes start they can also start by uh, 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 my first uh, sister she died when i was two years old mm. and then other things happen i mean can those episodes like can they also come in and and uh, make the connection? <laughs> um, sure, something like that. It, it's possible that I would think, and and the fortuitousness of the opportunity gives, like for instance, with your sister, my uh, heartfelt condolences. I, I can only imagine what that's like, and yet life goes on and there's a certain recognition of okay these things do happen and is that trauma from the separation the absence the the feeling of wanting her there it, is that going to stifle your ability of receiving other connections that are there normally that because of that there's resistance to it now because there's this angst of, oh, I'm going to get attached to that and I don't want that to happen. So I'm not going to allow it to happen in the first place. Yeah, that's true. And I could say, and in some of my books, at least also in the new one I'm working on right now, I'm talking about this also that the fear, fear of losing, because there have been many years in my life where I have been walking around conscious or unconsciously with fear of losing and when i go back uh, in time i was in a session like hypnosis session to call that and uh, i went back to that moment uh, i just talked about and then other moments on my timeline and i can see and recognize now that fear of losing had been part of my journey and that's also in with also in relation to money, uh, uh, loving relationships, and all this. Mm -hmm. Well, what so, you like T. Harv Eker says, right? What you do anywhere, you do everywhere. It's that unconscious pattern that you run <clears throat> that you're not aware of until something like your hypnosis session where you're able to look at things differently. And then the whole memory series changes yeah. in perception. Totally. Uh, so, 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 uh, yeah, it's incredible what can be in our subconscious mind, what can be there. It's like, wow, what a, what a, what a mm -hmm. data, what a data uh, box that we have there in our subconscious mind. And, and uh, it's amazing. It it's, is. Uh, it's like Young says, right? One of the best things we can do is make the unconscious conscious. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeking to do. And, and you know, I love the philosophy based on my own experience and, and references and research in, that we're all cosmic consciousness condensed into form, becoming aware. Well, what's that really mean? You know, if 
you know, the Bible says that, that God dwells within, all right, in each human being. Well, what's that really mean? What, <laughs> how do we experience that? It's one thing to understand it intellectually, right? How do we set the experience up so that we can embrace it when it shows up? How would you suggest it, or, or have you noticed in your own process of, you know, where your attention, your intention, and your interactions were such that these things eventually took place? Do, do you recognize the process that you're going through and the ability that you have to change your thinking during it? It's like a, on my timeline, I have. I have the good episodes and I have uh, negative bad episodes that's later become a gift or potential gift, but it's a little bit like uh, I, I can remember now like uh, one episode where I was not listening to my own um, voice, my own feelings saying, this is not good. Don't do this. I was listening to a, a man. It was my, uh, he was my director when I was sales and marketing manager for a huge company. Mm -hmm. And he was actually my mentor. And I was looking up to this guy and I thought he had the, like the answers maybe to my needs and all mm -hmm. that. So, so one day I asked him about a potential partner to my company because I needed, uh, some balance between my personality type and another personality type. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I have the right person for you, Morten. I believe I know that person. And when I met, met him, when I was introduced to him, I could just feel in my stomach and every, it's like, no, 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 no. This is not, <laughs> it's like, this is not right. I don't, is, I, I don't like I him. I get that feeling. Yeah, I, I understand. I don't like him. But see, simply because I was putting this man on a to say pedestal, like I was looking up to him and I thought, oh, he knew, knew better than myself. Right. I actually said yes to bring him in as a partner and that choice was one of the episodes where i lost like catastrophic uh, yeah yeah so so that's the situation again where 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 uh, this uh, what we what we have a, a wisdom ourselves mm -hmm. that i was uh, closing i was closing down this uh, um well, you weren't necessarily, as I understand you in explaining the situation, you were aware of the gut feeling, right? Yeah. That's what the indigenous call the first brain, right? Where you, it kind of senses everything and it lets the rest of that, the second brain, the heart, and then your choice tool, which is the brain, right? Yeah. We process differently and rather than understanding your own innate BS meter for, <laughs> for lack of a better, right? You opted for the acknowledgement, however in air it may have been, the acknowledgement of the wisdom of your mentor, right? Because you want to trust him. And, and this, as human beings, we often think of ourselves as less than those who are ahead of us, that they're more intelligent, they know they've got better wisdom, you know, you can seek answers from them, and that's not always the case. You have to remember to filter it through, filter it through your own system. Now, as you grew in, you know, your teenage years and, and early adult life, what were some of the things that you noticed that continued to lead you into that understanding of connectivity and maybe even the fulfillment of some of your curiosity about it? Um, I would say that uh, there, was, there was dreams in my life in the night where I thought, this is not a dream. It was like, uh, it's like, uh, am I dreaming or am I awake? Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, I think that's part of, uh, and uh, sometimes I went on a traveling 
like uh, leading the body and was traveling to a girl <laughs> that I was in love with and I was right. in in the dream right. and I was traveling and I, I was having a good time and then I was coming back and and I'm I'm just starting to wondering did I because the feeling after the the coming back like uh, waking up in the bed and all that and said did I actually dream or did I go on a journey to to that girl mm -hmm. and we had uh, a wonderful time and then I went back and um so was there later, any idea of validating that I mean later later in life later but I cannot remember when when I experienced I was I was in my uh in, I was in my bed and I experienced that I was leaving my own body and I was watching down at myself from, mm -hmm. from above and I was like a little core going up so I could I could see myself up and down and and um, it was a wonderful uh, experience and feeling and that, uh, then a person came uh, to the door uh, and I said inside myself don't come in don't come into the room don't come in and when that person was opening the door like this, boom, I went down from that uh, mm -hmm. up there into my body. And that is like, what is happening here? And then I thought, if, if that is, maybe that's part of my, of my, when I'm traveling in my dreams, maybe I am actually going on that. Uh, Interacting? You know, I have often wondered. I don't know. Too, I don't you know. know. Then. Many of us have very active dream lives, and, and we wonder uh, about those things with the regard to the out-of-body experience that you were talking about. There's often, you know, Raymond Moody, um, Bob Monroe, you know, uh, very old explorers of those worlds, right? They talk about the silver cord that you saw which, you know, never severs when you're in that place. And part of what, in my experience and, and in research as well, there's that sense of, am I going to die? Because you're in that, depending on how deeply you are aware of the process, there's a certain, almost a sensation, like a high-pitched sensation that comes right before that separation or a seeming separation occurs. And, and all it is is that release of your, what um, it was Don Juan called uh, the assemblage point when he was talking with Carlos Castaneda. So it's a place of where your reference point is and it can shift. Now, um, you know, you mentioned uh, going to be with the, uh, your girlfriend at the time, and, and that's really I cool. your girlfriend, and like I wish. <laughs> yeah, well, <clears throat> the reason I asked if there was any validation of that, I think I was probably around the same age, 18, 19. Um, I was in college, and we there was a, a couple that I had hung out with the year prior, and, and we just really, we were inseparable in our off hours from school. And both of them had left after that. One was on vacation with, at his grandfather's house up in Canada and wasn't sure whether she, where she had gone at all because I hadn't heard anything from her. I'm back at school the following year and my male friend is supposed to show up at the end of uh, fall quarter to start winter quarter. And I communicated with his parents. We knew each other that well. It, it, I knew his parents as well. So I was calling there asking when he was going to show up and and they didn't know and then so I'm finally it's like okay we've experimented with telepathy the year before and, and not just the three of us we had a whole cadre of 10 or 12 people that were practicing telepathy sending a message and telling someone to show up at a certain time at a certain place and then actually having it happen so we were showing that we had other things going on that most people never explored let alone to the extent that we did just because we were we didn't know any better right we just let's try it and see if it works so 
I come back from uh, an evening and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to try the process. And so I laid down and I pictured his face in my mind, looked into his eyes, which was the process we went through to send messages before. And then I took it a step further. I imagined grabbing him by the shoulders and standing him up. So I kind of panned out and saw his entire body, started a conversation with him. And as soon as I did, then this girl also came into my vision. And the three of us had a really nice chat during, uh, and I, I played a song by a band called White Witch called Help Me Lord, that was kind of a spacey, uh, not, you know, it, it facilitated that kind of music wise. And uh, so music ended, I, I came back unaware of so whether it was effective or not. And so I was on Saturday night, the following Friday, I called his parents to see if he was home yet. He answers the phone out of breath. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> dude, where have you been? He says, I just got home and I knew that was you on the phone. So I ran in to answer it. I'm like, okay, we still got it. And he says, yep, okay. So a couple hours enough time, I want to come over and, and uh, you know, let's catch up. So did, got out in the car, I talked to his parents, got out in the car. And the first question I asked him was, hey, did you catch any flack last weekend? That's all I said. Yeah. And he looks at me and he says, yeah, you son of a bitch, you woke me up out of bed. And I'm like, what? And he said, yeah, I was laying there sound asleep. Now he's a couple thousand miles into Canada at his grandfather's cabin, no electricity, no communication, nothing like that. So he says, yeah, I was laying there sound asleep, felt like somebody grabbed me by the shoulders and sat me up in bed. I opened my eyes up and there was your face. And behind your face was Carolyn's face. I'm like, oh man. I said, okay, that's, you know, what do you do with that, right? It, it Don't remember the conversation we had, right? But the fact that that emotional impact was still there. And then a week and a half later, he gets a postcard in the mail from a Krishna camp right, which there's numerous of them down, up and down the coast of California. The one in Santa Barbara was circled. And the only thing besides his address on the back of the card was enjoyed the conversation. And it was Carolyn's handwriting. Exactly. So at 19 years old, which is the age that we all were, exploring and understanding that those kinds of things can and do happen also gives you a certain reverence for the sacredness of it and now, how would you incorporate those kinds of things in, in the ongoing exploration of how we integrate the inner and outer experiences that we have in the world you know i i i have a, as you say travel a little bit or a lot depending on how we view it uh, and also being together with native american indians in and uh, also staying together with some Aboriginals in Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a lot still of this communication that you were talking about when they are hunting, especially uh, uh, in the past. But somebody uh, trying to keep holding on to that. And, and uh, one day one said to me, nothing new, just forgotten, rediscovered. That part of our journey, maybe here on Earth, right now at this present moment is that that we have to uh, recognize this uh, that that part of the knowledge and maybe also to solve the problems in the world uh, with uh, the, the the challenge that we have where mm -hmm. we don't have to look into the always into the future but look back and 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 maybe use some of the things and the knowledge that they had in aboriginals 20,000 years ago or something else. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we can also get uh, um, insight from there. Uh, Absolutely. From, well, and, the, and, uh, the, the Vedas are one of those documents, right? 15,000 years old, plus or minus, right? Yeah. And they contain that very same thing that, that I expressed earlier is my understanding of cosmic consciousness condensed into the form. They put it in the... Uh, the theme, I believe, of unitive consciousness, white light, of which we were all divine threads of incarnate, capable of becoming God. 
Now that doesn't mean that we usurp the Almighty, right? That just means that for us in this form, we're capable of completely manifesting and managing our reality. And we do that whether we're unconscious or conscious of it. So how do we make that leap from the unconscious, which is all the aberrant behaviors that we witness in ourselves and others, and move that toward something that's more compatible in, in a, not a sameness, but a unification of the diversity. But sometimes this can also, you know, I'm working with business people also, and there's a movement going on where spirituality is getting more and more, uh, yeah, uh, it's okay. Uh, and more and more see it as a puzzle piece in the leadership and and all that. But uh, my, I, I think that there are many things that we need to experience ourselves. It's, uh, diff it's, it's a little bit like this. I know that you and I, we have uh, maybe some experience also with uh, something we see uh, that we maybe could call uh, 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 un what to call it, a U UFO or something like, if mm -hmm. you have seen it, if you have seen that and you have been close to it, you have experienced it, and then you can say, now I know because I have seen it and, and I've been there or I have been close to it. Right. That's that's very convincing uh, to ourselves when we have been there. But well, It's our truth. About, we, we know no different. Yeah. Right. So when we talk about it to others and say, I have experienced that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's, it's, so there are some of those things we are talking about here that if you want to 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 uh, spread that consciousness or that uh, understanding or that people have to experience it themselves and the same with young people there are so many uh, including my own uh, children and myself uh, we can uh, we can hear it from others also some very good things but we have to experience we have to we have to work we have to go on the journey ourselves and experience this what is it scripturally you know uh, faith without works is empty or something like that right you can believe it you can understand it intellectually yeah. until you have an experience of it it's still like yeah. okay yeah. well you know if anything's possible why can't it happen that's our belief nothing is good or bad it's how we think it to be right this is the power that we have and even our word Satan comes from the Greek word Thetan, which means thinker, T-H-E-T-A-N. Well, that's what we are. And depending on how we choose to think, we can either be unifying or separative. And we interpret that as fear or love. So how do we bridge that gap? How do we elicit a greater understanding or at least openness or open-mindedness to having the conversations about these types of things in more open environments and, and even in business world. Now, we don't need to go into the UFOs and things like that. However, the concepts of the interconnectedness can be applied anywhere. How have you found it to work for you in, in what you've been able to do through your writing and, and through your clowning around, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I see myself as a person that can deliver some inspiration, uh, as one thing, as like inspiration, and I can, and I can, uh, I can tell my own stories, like from an honest place, and that way people can feel, they can sometimes mirror themselves in my good stories and in my bad stories. Sure, and we see, some of them don't see need, ourselves in others. Yeah, and they don't need to go through, it's not, then some can be inspired so much that they don't need to, to, to uh, necessarily go through the same, but be inspired so much that you actually uh, uh, don't need, uh, it's like you're jumping over some steps maybe and can faster go into uh, to either the success or avoid the failure. Again, I don't, and actually don't believe in failure. <laughs> uh, I, I believe I in potential I. opportunities, but yeah. anyway. Uh, 
Yeah, so, so, there's no failure, just not anticipated results. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I actually have to remember to tell you something from what we talked about a little bit uh, five minutes ago, but I need to tell you this because uh, on one of my trips, I went to Australia to to uh, and did a dive at uh, and got the diving license at the Great Barrier Reef. Wow, and uh, wow. so I was in, I was in Australia. Yeah. And I was on a night dive. Uh, oh, I, I was on a dive and on that dive there came water into my mask and uh, I was taking instead of bringing the water out I was getting the water in my lungs. Mm. So I was starting <coughs> And I was close I was on 20 meters and I was so afraid. I was so afraid that I was going to die. Um, but a diving instructor was helping me. And after a couple of minutes, I calmed down. Okay. And it was a great barrier reef on a boat. Uh, no uh, mobile phone at that time. No communication like that. Mm -hmm. So a couple of days later, we went to the mainland. And I was able for the first time to give a call home to my mother. And my mother, she was taking the phone and she said, oh, I'm so happy that you are calling. I have been so nervous, Morton. Why? Because I had a dream uh, two days ago where you were uh, under the water and uh, you were close of dying and all that. So 9,000 or 10,000, I don't know how many kilometers mm -hmm. from Australia to my mother. And at that time, and that's, we could calculate because of the time difference that when I had that experience underneath the water, my mother was having that experience. Dreaming. Yeah. In, in her, Fascinating. it's like, and that's something that also bring awareness that uh, there are more to life than the, uh, that we can see and hear and uh... thoughts are connected. And, and when you're in that place, right, that when they, they say that when you're facing death, right, the first thing you think of are your most solid connections in life, mom mm -hmm. being one of them. And so she's sensitive to you. So that opens up that wavelength. What's really cool, and, and I did some research on. Um, the speed of thought, because I had an experience being taken across the universe for eight minutes, according to the facilitator, and then the same journey taking eight minutes to get back. So there was consistency in that, not just a random pattern and, or a random event. There was a pattern. So in my research, um, I found something in a rather obscure reference book called the Urantia book. And it stated that the speed of thought was 841 trillion miles per second. So for us here on the planet, that would be instantaneous in sending a thought and the other having received it, right? Or in being in that kind of situation where your unbridled intent to connect to your mother connected with her during your dream time and she was given that experience of what you were having at the time and i find that so resident so obviously demonstrating that connection right and it's not a random thing we all have that and I know you agree with that because that's part of what we're trying to do is raise this awareness. It's like, gosh, people, you know, look at this, explore it. Don't be afraid of it because okay. it produces a fearlessness over time because you begin to trust yourself. Yeah, and I, I know there's still somebody that say the earth is flat. Uh, but uh, yeah. but in my opinion, we not, I see... Uh, I see uh, behind you, uh, the Earth is round. Oh, yeah. But uh, my so, views are often considered yeah. to be off planet, too, right? So, so, but, but uh, my point is only that the talk we have here, whatever, whatever you are CEO of a big company or you are a young person or whoever is watching this, it's a, it's a little bit like this. 
that if we if we go, do like this with our view in life and uh, in business and everything, we have limit view. And uh, sometimes we believe then then maybe the earth is flat or whatever we believe. And when we get a bigger view and bigger understanding and be inspired by other, ex explore that. Mm -hmm. Also the, the possibilities, whatever it is, are increasing and we will get more op options uh, if we open our mind instead of closing down uh, mm -hmm. Like that. So would you so, say that the closing comes in a competitive mindset rather than a collaborative one? I, based on my experience, yes, uh, okay. but I don't have any proof of that. It's not just that uh, that uh, that. Uh, well, the question again, just I, came up. I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and, and there again, not be any proof. It's subjective, right? That's a move. At the same time, it does seem to hold some value that that would, you know, the competitive mind having to be right, having to win, having yeah. to do all that. So yeah. that's a very myopically driven. Whereas collaboratively, it's a servant leadership role. How can I help you achieve what you need in order to do to accomplish the larger goal, right? And whether that's a CEO or a shipping clerk. <laughs> we but also the acceptance of quant quant the quantum physics and other new uh, new thoughts that are 100 years old that are going to be more and more accepted are bringing more and more uh, consciousness and awareness and possibilities and and uh, innovation also based on that we open up for for those uh, um, those possibilities and also some of the things in our talk instead of saying no 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 that cannot be true uh, maybe also go on a journey where we we uh, instead of closing down and say that's not true yeah. at least could say maybe possibility uh, don't know possibility. let's find out let's, let's find out it. And, yeah. so 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 that's part of that's uh, that's definitely part of what i would like to see happen uh, with business people uh, engineers and innovative uh, uh, the innovation will mm -hmm. will be uh, because they're curious about what I can do, how I can make this better, how can I perfect a design so that, you know, like for an aerospace company I used to work for, pneumatics driven, right? So how can I create the airflow so that it's maximized and produces the most torque for the device to work without damage, right? <laughs> Same with us, right? Yeah. How can we move ourselves to the point where we're pushing the envelope of our own experience and yet not damaging ourselves in the process, right? So what's the good sense in that? How do you see, let's look at the, uh, maybe the evidence that we might be able to cite over the last period of years and even in your journeys to visiting the other elders, right? The, the wise ones, let's call them. Uh, how, what evidence do you see as a golden thread throughout that, that seems to be consistent, at least in the ability to open to possibility? Because we can't really go too far and, okay, let's demonstrate that by, here's an example and we'll <laughs> offer an experience right now. We could be. Yeah. Maybe there, we could. Yeah, maybe we could. tuning in and going, yeah, you yeah. know, having all kinds of things pop up. Maybe we could. I mean, uh, I often, when I do uh, my work, uh, business or private people or whatever, I bring them into a time machine that can go to different destinations. Mm. And the time machine can also travel to the future. And uh, you can experience, imagine a fantastic future that doesn't exist right now. You just use your imagination, your fantasy. And, and that's probably part of your, the answer to your question, that if we as human beings are destroying our biggest, uh, what we have in our, what I believe in, that's our imagination, that's our creativity, that's our ability to actually also go on a journey like that. Mm -hmm. Let's say, uh, uh, technology is taking over and we are 
scrumping in and 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 we forget if we don't use it we forget and then i don't want to do that but if we take it and say that's something that we really have to to use at this uh, tool a tool whatever um and um some if they're close-minded <laughs> if they are what did you call it you had another word for it myopic uh, yeah then they say that this ah uh, this is uh this is uh, silly this is uh because we cannot see it. we don't believe in this uh, whatever mm -hmm. so 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 they don't get that inspiration for go into a journey in their imagination and actually being able to create something fantastic i don't know if that's the answer to the question but that's at least what came to me well, as that's at least a partial answer obviously right so is there something that we might be able to see as a demonstration on a global scale as to how that process might be in process and operational currently as a result of something? That's maybe a leading you know, question. I'm hoping you'll pick yeah, that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, maybe you know this uh, better than I. I think there have been some experiments, serious experiments, with some cities, also in the uh, United States and in war areas and things like that, where human beings are creating a circle around the city or a community. And they are then sending love and, and meditating uh, good things to the community or the town or everything. Uh, and and after, the, if it's like uh, there's a lot of uh, criminal uh, activities and all that. Mm -hmm. After that, it falls down with twenty five percent or something like that. Yeah. And also yeah. in the uh, area, it's like when we come together like that and connect it, us bringing this uh, out like a vibration. Mm -hmm. If that's possible, that's uh, like a, wow. Again, it's we have to. We have to do it more. Percentage can affect the critical mass, and and then and to edify what you're saying, not everybody's looking for that. Matter of fact, most people are probably not looking to validate that kind of experience. And yet, if you would like to do a Google search, you know, find out for yourself because the information is there. I found it and I know you have too, Morton, because you're referencing it, right. right? So it's there now, you know, with the internet is it, we often have to ask, is it true or not? Is this somebody's promotion of their belief system or is it actual demonstrable facts and, and can be proven statistically? Well, with those kinds of things, there are some references that hold those numbers. And, and, you know, it's been said there's liars, damn liars, and statisticians. You can manipulate the numbers any way you want. However, the fact is they're available. And it's not just for one location. These are things that have been done all over the world. So that's a demonstrable fact, if you will, that folks can take a look at and say, oh, okay, so... Wow, if That's that true. is possible, right? Still not admitting that it is yet, but if that is possible. And that's true. What else might we be able to achieve? And, and let's say that we are not able then to, to stay together with a lot of people. What can we do ourselves? Let's say, because I like this, what you focus on expands, you know? Absolutely. And, 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 and that way we also uh, bring out some vibrations or some thoughts and some energy around ourselves. So if we think and focus on good things, we will receive and get more good things. If we focus on in our thoughts and in our everything, bad things, and that's what we're going around all the time or most of the, our day and week and year to think and be in those vibrations, that's what we will see happen around us. Mm -hmm. and see if a whole community or a country are going around like that. That's sad. 
Well, that's no, it, like it that. really is. And, and <laughs> you know, the neuroserpent or, or neuro gurus or, or um, neuro geeks, I guess, that talk about the 70,000 thoughts we have a day, how they measure those. I'm, I have no idea, but let's just say that that's a valid figure. Most of them are self deprecating that we have because they're unconscious and we just let them happen without even realizing it. We're so yeah. nature. However, when you start monitoring that, then you can begin to pick and choose and you have to be able to monitor it. You have to choose to do so, yeah. first of all, and be willing to just, okay, what kind of practice can I engage to where I can slow down enough to think about what I'm thinking? Right. So there's a second part. There's an observer in there that has to become aware of what you're thinking, first of all. And that observer is often an aspect of ourselves that's ever present, but we don't pay attention to. Right. Because we want to believe what's happening outside of us and the words and actions, of, mostly the words of others, because the actions usually prove quite differently than the words. Uh, but how do we then bring that back into a practical daily activity that allows us to see things differently? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's funny because, because here in front of me, I have just been to, to Hawaii and been together with some Japanese uh, and also a fantastic man a Zen uh, guy called Ken Honda. So uh, when I was in San Francisco on my way home, I know I have a background. I, I found this little cat here, you know, that I, uh, and, and, and it's oh, saying, yeah. what, what, what is it saying there on the hand? And, and the guy in the store said that you will attract money. That's right. And my point is now I know that this cat is the metaphor for that cat is you are attracting money. <laughs> right. So when I watch, so when I watch that cat, that is my, that's what I would re remember. Well, that's the trigger, right. Every time it's you like see a, that, that's the it, mental trigger that you get. That's the trigger. Yeah. And, and somebody have told me that the cat's arm are saying you are attracting money. He could no, have I went said to the never. extreme with, with those kinds of things. It's beautiful. It's, it's just, it's a symbol. It's, could it be so such a small thing as a cat that sitting there with, with the light uh, when there's, and that reminds, reminds me right now about something uh, that actually will make it increase or happen in a, and I believe so. I mean, uh, I've seen so many times that, that, uh, that uh, it's worked. It's it work, It's working. It's like affirmations and it's like, Affirmation is also a way of uh, bringing new thoughts into your mind that will uh, make new things happen. Uh, and uh, so now we there's all a key factor along with that, the, the law of attraction, right? It's what we're talking about. And the idea of engaging the mind and the thoughts and, and the being in that it is half the picture, right? You still have to pay attention to those subtle impressions that you're moved to do something. Now, it's not the doing that makes the difference. It's the being that's available to hear what that doing needs to be rather than, you know, the random sense <laughs> of just all kinds of attempts of, of wanting money rather than being yeah. that and, and allowing it to come. You know, it, it's... The, you remind me of the, one of my past residences uh, that I was living by myself for a while. I had my office wallpapered with affirmations <laughs> that I printed out. Literally. I mean, it was covered. I had friends come in and said, my God, what happened? <laughs> you get lost in there for hours just reading everything. But every time I would walk into that room, I would see something different. And I would have that thought, just because I'm reading it, the thought's now in my head. And it allowed me to 
you know, maintain that focus. And, and because of that, I you know a lot of my friends call me the eternal optimist. I'm always finding a silver lining in things, no matter what they are, like COVID. Right. This is where I was hoping you'd go when I asked the question earlier. What what do you notice in, in the you know recent events in the world? Because to me, COVID opened the door for a literally new world order, something to emerge that's never been there before to happen. And, and how that is taking place from what my perspective is, when we were told to be obsessed on self-hygiene and sequestrated in order to keep us away from others, what did that give us the opportunity to do? Sit quietly examine ourselves, go inside and ask those critical questions. Who am I? What am I here to do? What do I believe in? How do I want to behave to demonstrate that? And who can I find to love and be loved by? Right? Those are the critical questions that we needed to ask, in my opinion, based on what we produce so far in the world, which is kind of not healthy. So moving forward, then, once that sequestration and obsession on health, on self hygiene as a behavior modification process, it, you know, always goes internal. That's just the nature of what it does. When you impose a something from the outside, it eventually works its way in and you change accordingly, hopefully, right? Well, this message was separate be obsessed on your self hygiene. That was one aspect of it, to be afraid of everyone. And then from the internal perspective though, it's just the opposite view. No, I need that connection. I, I am not alone, right? There are others like me. Now this gives us the opportunity to seek those others and the virtual groups that started coming online shortly thereafter were just amazing as proof, I would offer. Now, what yeah, do we but, do with that? But I would also say, uh, Sen, I was, uh, I was in uh, Los Angeles around uh, that time, also before and also after. And uh, a lot of the young people at schools uh, that was, uh, was uh, from uh, families that didn't have a... Uh, uh, the right maybe tools or abilities or whatever some the the I, again now i use a word that i don't like when i say the weak i don't mean weak i mean just mean that they had not the best circumstances mm -hmm. so when they were alone i had to do learning home behind this they got they got they got uh, weak they got weaker because they they needed exactly people around them and and, we're social uh, animals. Uh, we're designed that way. So, so, so there was there was something happened there around that, and we still learn from that. But there's something also based on what you're saying there. Uh, see how um, these see how a world uh, situation where all were coming to it's like many many were coming together to solve something to to make something make a change. Mm -hmm. make make a change and uh, i know that again uh, there are two uh, are many uh, op uh, opinions about uh, about the the uh, the scientist uh, work and all that but anyway scientists from all over the world are starting to working together many of them at least many are working together around this and finding solutions faster than ever uh have seen before. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, I, I know that somebody say, uh, but anyway, the good thing was we learn, we learn a little bit about that still hope, that hope for, mm -hmm. for science, because we also need science, in my opinion, uh, Absolutely. To, to work around uh, the issues that we have in front of us, the dilemmas with our pollution and many other things. We need science. And uh, so when they start to cooperate, instead of uh, uh, be sitting in their own little uh, room, uh, that's fantastic. I know they have done it for a long time, but I just love when uh, I see there's still hope uh, for 
and I think we should focus on that a lot so that that there's still hope for, for totally good agree. things. Because they're house divided. If you're looking at the old paradigm, problem solution, mm -hmm. right? That's sales. Right. The, you discover something and it, you know, it's like instead of improvement possibility. Right? Because nothing is again right or wrong. It's how we perceive it to be. And if we're pointing fingers, you got three of them coming back at you. So maybe there's some alternative views that you might want to consider before you point that finger. That's what my dad taught me when I was young. Right? Be careful pointing fingers. You better have three solutions or don't point. Right. Otherwise, all you're doing is just adding to the chaos. Right? Do we really want to do that? Maybe some of us do, right? Because chaos can be fun, right? When things are out of control and, and you, and for those of us, I find that kind of fun, massive people that I love putting together large events. I've done things for a quarter million people in one night, right? So having that chaos seemingly organized, it allows you to learn how to step into the middle of chaos. And like Orbindo says, Find your center, and that's the only way you can do it, is to step into the chaos, to embrace it, and then allow your path to reveal itself in it. And it will, because you're asking the question. It has to. But, but then uh, uh, in the innovation recipe that I only have in Danish, but uh, the, the, the thing is that, you know, we have front end, we have the front end of innovation, and then it goes through a... Uh, at some uh, stages of things and then we have the in final product or whatever we are creating. Mm -hmm. So in the front end of innovation, we need people like you and I. We need people that can, instead of closing down, open up and see a lot of possibilities. And, uh, and, and that's also part of brainstorming, isn't it? That uh, open up and then, then doing the process of <laughs> uh, from the, the, all the wild uh, ideas and all that, uh, there are some that we take out and we prioritize them. And then we bring them through the machine of, uh, <laughs> of mm -hmm. creation. So we get more and more, um, uh, the chaos will be less and we get more structured. So we also need people that are structured, that can, uh, Absolutely. engineers that can take the ideas. But in the front end, the front end innovation, it, and also in that's the uh, imagination side of things right the innovation the the imagination the creativity and then it's funneled through the math and science to make it happen exactly because and it I think, can't be exactly and that's what i would like at least one thing from our discussion that is so clear that that the that's ability we have as human beings to to have that uh, uh, possibility we have it here, we have it here, or here, mm -hmm. in the heart, or everywhere. Uh, so so uh, let's hold on to that as that's something we, we want to see grow. <laughs> now, speaking uh, of possibility, let's, let's look at another side of things. We're talking innovation, creativity, and um, shifting the bipolarism of the problem-solution equation, right? Yeah. Two, in this new work world, right? There's a lot of changes happening and there's a lot of job loss. There's a lot of job creation. Now, in that process, do we, do you see the understanding of taking a, a given skill set that you've used for 20, 30 years in an industry that you felt home in and now having to repurpose that for something else. And do you find that folks are not necessarily c considering what their skill set development has been and how they might be able to repurpose that toward their own passion and or purpose that they've discovered in life? And how that might also integrate a greater flow rather than, oh my God, what am I going to do? I don't want to do this. I don't know how to do it. 
you know, my passion is toward this, but I don't, I, I don't feel like I've got the qualification to do that when in actuality you do. Right. How do, do you find that that's a um, potential stumbling block in, in the in the thinking that as we're progressing through that and maybe limiting ourselves too? Maybe it's maybe it's all about mindset. Uh, then that uh, that there are different kinds of mindset uh, walking around. And uh, we can train, we can train uh, us, ourselves also to to have a new mindset. It, it, an example is that maybe in the past I was a victim, but based on some uh, understanding about myself and develop, I become more and more like a person that takes responsibility for mm -hmm. for the situation and don't see failure as a failure, but right. Or realizes the responsibility yeah. of them so, creating the situation that made them feel like a victim. Exactly. So something that we all have in common, CEO from a big company or unemployed or uh, whatever, who, whatever we are, that is we are working mindset, walking around on earth. We don't have the same mindset, all of us, but we can have a, I actually don't know where I'm going. We certainly have a similar one, right? Because all of these things throughout history have been stated by many. You know, I, I, I thought of Goethe the, recently, you know, whatever the mind of man can achieve and believe, or no, that, that's Napoleon Hill, I think. But the other one was uh, whatever you can dream, you can begin it. Boldness has genius, magic, and power in it. It's true. You just got to step into it and know that somebody will be there to hold your hand, right? Because there will be. The, the fact that you've committed and made that step, I, I love the, the old friend terms it as the momentum tunnel. You create a momentum tunnel simply by devoting, devoting your energy to you and your purpose. And the universe has to acknowledge that because you've created now a point of reference that's collecting the energy because you've already intended for it to happen, which means as long as you're making the actions to do so, it will. And it may take 10 years, it may take 20 years, it may take a lifetime, depending on your vision and goal for you. And a key word, a key word also to what we talked about was experiment, like Mm -hmm. don't, don't stop experiment and even it's failing don't stop experiment see it i know we are back long time back in history but edison did ten thousand experiments before there was light right uh, so 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 uh, a big part of this is if we stop experimenting and are not curious so curiosity and being curious is like a keyword and 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 experimenting is a keyword I think to to part of what we need in business, but also as a human being to have this in our, and maybe it start by a decision. I want to be, I want to be like, I, I want to be recognized for being curious. Sure. I want to be recognized for being experiment. I don't know where it starts, but anyway. Right. <laughs> now when, in, in looking at both perspectives that you've got personal and professional. Yeah. Right. Those are the two lives that we live, the inner and the outer, right? We're generally bereft of the inner. And so this is part of what that personal aspect of self is that you bring into the world eloquently, hopefully, <laughs> eventually. Um, and, and yet, you know, the experimentation, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Learn how to enjoy the bumps right? Because they're going to be there. How do you see, on one hand, a professional aspect of bringing in that into an example of a workplace situation? And then on a personal side, how have you noticed that in your travels and, and uh, having the opportunity to sit with great masters and, and contemplate those things? Ooh. I know that's a tough one. 
is it can I take uh, the Dalai Lama court uh, uh, sure uh, card now yeah. <laughs> I sure. don't know that I, I, yeah, I use yeah, it yeah, now. Yeah. But uh, if you did, okay, so this is my response when I get that from coaching yeah, clients. Yeah, you got, right? you they, have I to, don't know. But what if I don't know, guys? But if I would you actually, are connected to everything as we know you are, then there's something there you just have to be open and receive. I would like to explore it. I would like to. Okay. It. So that's number one thing. I would like to explore it. So uh, because I, I like your question, but. Uh, I have not really been uh, asked it before. Yeah. So, so uh, <laughs> I knew that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so that's uh, that's part of it. That potentially it needs a little bit of reflection. <coughs> Can we continue tomorrow? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Fast forward. We're now today. Yeah, yeah. the eternal now, right? Yeah. And that, that's another thing we don't really realize that the past and the future don't exist. It's always a now moment. Now, it doesn't mean you can't think about the future or the past. The experience is in the present. So, professionally and personally, how do you pull the nuggets? How do you harvest the past and plant the future? Wow. Again, I, I have a story that maybe fits into this or maybe not, but I have to tell you this. Okay. I told you that uh, then when I was two years old, my, uh, my, my sister. Your sister but, died. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she was buried in a, in a family graveyard without any stone because she, she died when she was born and she was not able to get a, uh, a name. Oh. So she didn't have a name, things like that. Yeah. And so she was buried. I was only, uh, I was not that old at that time. So I cannot again remember, but I have heard this from my parents. Then uh, no stone, no name, nothing. But she was buried and we didn't talk more about that in the family. It's like mm. back in the sixties. And at that time it's like, we don't talk more about that. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, then my father, he was not here anymore. He's a different place in whatever. And my, my mother was talking, she was 84 at that time. She was talking about um, this because I was confronting her with this loss and what happened and all that. And she didn't want to talk about it. And then, I decided to do something. I decided to contact the uh, church and and see if we could move my uh, sister to uh, the town where we are living now, and my 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 mother is living, and my father is buried, and move that ashes to that mm -hmm. and bury her. And I asked my mother, could we give her a name? What was your thought about the name when? And again, she didn't want to talk about it, but after a, time, a couple of times, she said her name should be Ea, Ea, something like that in English. So I made a stone also with the name and all that. And we moved her from that place and, to the, and we buried her together with my, with my father, with a stone. Mm -hmm. And my point is with this, by bringing that, action into it's like taking something from the past bringing it into the, the now and give it new energy like now she have a name right she have a name and there's another uh, experience now it's not based on uh, sadness or this uh, happened 60 years ago or whatever now it was a new moment and the family my my two children and i we were there also to to be there and say, uh, and it was a good moment. Mm -hmm. Well, and you it, took a, um, something that was rather disjointed and brought it back together with purpose and, and love. A right? new energy. Yeah. And maybe that's part of what quantum physics is about, that you can, you, can, uh, you can change things in the universe. Maybe. I'm just curious that... Uh, Time is not existing, so we we can just change the we can change the 
opinion about that moment mm -hmm. and bring new energy to it and bury her there. And that was a wonderful moment. And I had just been thinking about that as a possibility that we can, the episode in our life or in business, whatever it's that. Also the sad moments or the negative moments or whatever we call them, failure. We can bring new light to them. We can bring you, uh, we can give them new light. And then uh, they don't have the same influence on our life. Sure. Um, and uh, that is what have happened in my life a couple of times that I have to see and those moments as potential gifts and change them into a gift instead of bringing me down. Right. And that must be the same for all human beings around the globe. I, that, I, that, that, that I agree. I, yeah. Don't you think? I mean, that's Absolutely. part of our journey. That's part of our, what can Absolutely. make us free. And, and that's part I of have... what can make us free. And, 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 and uh, it, yeah, it was really similar. You know, I was orphaned and adopted at birth. I had no idea who my birth parents were. And, and when I got remarried um, to my wonderful uh, partner in life, Luba, um, she got me an ancestry subscription for our first Christmas in 2017, 2019, my half sister shows up and I get to meet my, my birth mother. Wow. Right? Now I didn't really have stuff on it that I was aware of because I never really felt abandoned where, what I felt was I was never understood. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there was that side of abandonment but that was for a totally different person that or purpose than um, my biological heritage so i met mom we went back spent a, a week with her i found out that i'd actually met my father in 1989 at the ufo discussion group so that explained where i got my weirdness from right and then um, i found out that she too my given name was bruce so that's what my adoptive parents named me she too would have named me bruce it was rather odd, right? And she had four bouts of cancer, all in remission at that point. And she had never told the family about me until maybe 10 years prior. So she was 87 at the time. And once she did, then my half sister said, hey, mom, we got to, you know, find him if possible. So when they did, so we had went back, her regrets, everything. I tried to assuage them and, and just say, look, mom, I love you. Thank you. Right. There was no angst for me. And, and I know she understood that. However, because of the anger at herself, the resentment, the self-judgment, all those kinds of things, depending on what it was, that's what started the cancer, in my opinion. And so each one of those things produced, you know, different cancers in her body. And then once she reached out, they went into remission. Or at least began that process. It, it, it seemed, I could be wrong, right? But just from observing it from this perspective, it seems true. And once we met, that was, I was the last item on her bucket list. So we we spent a week, had a wonderful time. I met my half sister, my half brother, and then the following year, all the cancer came back, and she passed. Yeah. So at least there was that, and I, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I prayed and and searched for my biological present the parents up until my mid thirties, and then I gave up. Because I'd searched everything and gotten responses and it just wasn't there. And I didn't have any other information to follow up with. So it was nearly impossible. And yet it wasn't. Right? Because I just had to wait. 61 years it took for that to happen. Well, how often do we have to wait for things or learn to be patient for those things to arrive? We want it now. We, you know, it's yeah. that look enlightenment you know, mentality that we have in the world right now, that everything can happen quick. No, it can't. There's a process. You have to step into it to allow it to happen. How would you reflect on, on that in your understanding and 
what advice might you be able to offer to others to help them in their own process? Wow. <clears throat> the first thing that comes to me here is this uh, law of uh, cause and effect. That's number one. It's mm -hmm. like uh, uh, I now are uh, not, I, I'm so clear that cause and effect is working. We produce success is not a coincidence. It's based on something that we do, uh, the way we are thinking, the way we are acting, the way we are cooperating with others and so on. And every people have a success pattern, something the way they create uh, good things in life. And actually, and that's the, the, the big R for me also, mm -hmm. the same is happening around the bad things. There's also a pattern behind that. There's, there is a thinking, there's some feelings, there are some ways that we are doing things that are pursue, 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 producing those results. So we really have to, 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 to uh, understand that our thoughts, our feelings and our actions are producing our results. And if we are not happy about that, we have to go back and change our thoughts, feelings and actions because that will create new results. Mm. And that's really, and, and, and I can really see when I do my lectures and workshops and uh, webinars and whatever, that, uh, that uh, uh, the, the past is over, but it's in our memories, it's in our subconscious mind or in whatever. And the future is not here yet, it's in our thoughts uh, about the future, our imagination and Mm -hmm. uh, all that so what you also have said before there's only one thing and that's the now so when we bring when we bring our visions from for the future and our success understanding about how we produce when we really make things good things together in the now if it makes sense with power act with actions that really makes a difference mm -hmm. we can create some very very beautiful things because it's coming from the it's coming from good it's coming from a good energy it's coming right. from things we love the problem is that many people they create based on the same principle things that they don't want it's like mm -hmm. it's the same it's, and they have to be aware that if they're not happy about and that's the same for me if i'm not happy about my situation to do the same thing again and again and expect a different result right. is, is insanity. And we have to learn that and understand that. And, and, and uh, wow, that's something I get more and more uh, clear about. I'm 61 now and I begin to understand it more and more. It's like, wow, yeah, it's, it is, it, it is true. You know, I had a friend that, that writes me, um, Mixed Blood Cherokee, storyteller, uh, wonderful, wise man. And in my mid forties, I tried to find him. I hadn't talked to him in, in a while. He's got a book online. I got a hold of the webmaster and they reached out to him. About a week later, I get a phone call. Oh, see you, brother. And <laughs> we start talking and he said, you know, and this just came out of the blue from him. He says, you know, in our tradition, you can't either form a council or join another until you're 51. And that kind of set me back. I never thought about it, right? But there's got to be, you know, something. So at 51, what's that mean? Well, you're usually a grandparent. You've had a successful career. Uh, of course, in, in indigenous times, you, you've made it through. You know, you're still alive. Um, and it gives that opportunity to really see things from a grander perspective because you've got the life experience to back up the wisdom that you've garnered. Yeah. And with your reference to think, how you think, feel, and behave, right? That to me equated, just dovetailed right into where your attention is, what your intention is. So that's thoughts, feelings, intentions, 
how you want to feel, because that's really the ultimate. You want to feel good about what you're doing, right? So you intend to do that. And then the interactions are the actions that you take in order to create the opportunities for it to happen, right? Because it's not just you. There's going to be others that come into that picture as well to imbue it with the beauty that only random, you know, synchronicities and serendipitous moments, which are designed into the plan, right? Because we don't understand how intricate the thoughts and the feelings and the activities are that produce events. I mean, it could, like I say, it could take a lifetime for the universe to arrange stuff in order for you to walk through one door. Yeah, that's true. It's a, uh, yeah, but we can, but we can, we can go on a journey and we can, we can have time in our calendar and in our mind for synchronicity to happen. Absolutely. Like uh, we can, we can decide that we, when we go on this journey, maybe traveling, or, that I will experience as many uh, wonderful synchronicity coincidences in my life when I'm on this journey. So if if my calendar is full of meetings and always busy, 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 busy with that, I will not experience that kind of synchronicity because I don't create space in my mm -hmm. life for this to happen. So I have to believe synchronicity is possible and I have to create space in my, my life for this to happen and see it when I'm around and all that. And it's so wonderful. It happens all the time. And that's maybe the biggest moments in my life. It's every, it's something that was not planned. And some of the worst thing is also something that are not planned. That's another story. But <laughs> it makes, it's, well, Lord, it's not, you have just, uh, please go ahead and finish yeah. your talk. No, but it's, it's, uh, I, I think I'm done. I think, uh, I just wanted to say that. Are we really ever done? <laughs> that that this that this uh, this um, by being on a journey. Uh, one of my friends is a famous film instructor here in Denmark called Peter Engberg. He have made some fantastic movies also about the universe and consciousness. I would like to connect you with him. He's like fantastic, Peter Engberg. Anyway, very good. And uh, and. Uh, Peter Peter Engberg, he um, he um, he in, introduced introduced me to to actually to uh, there's uh, no coincidence. It's like uh, and there's some funny stories where books have been falling on a time on a phone uh, recorder, and I was on the phone recorder. And it's like small small things where it can only be synchronicity that I have been or whatever yeah i just want i'm just so excited about all the wonderful things that are when you explore and you are open, are happening yeah. and yeah because you see it if you if you search for it if you you see if you don't you don't see it right then you don't experience if you don't believe in synchronicity you don't experience synchronicity because you don't see it it's there but you don't see it yeah. it's like Wow. Great to be a seeker, isn't it? And we yeah. can only hope that there are more. Morton, this has been just a phenomenal conversation. And I really appreciate you as a professional, as a personal friend now, and, and just as a wise being that we could have a great conversation with today yeah. and share that with an yeah. audience that's ready yeah. and willing to receive yeah so thank you so much yeah i'm grateful and happy to know you now also on a deeper level and our previous talks had also been fantastic and that's what we that's what i want more of in my life it's like those kind of connections Let's and that's also happen. what i was searching for as a young person that kind of connection <laughs> those are coming yeah Thank you so much for planting that seed and for being with us today. Yeah. Namaste and Namaste. la catch. And thank you for sticking with us for this episode of One World in a New World. We truly appreciate it. 
and we'll see you next time.